Good afternoon, Nash County. Uh, we're glad to welcome you to Ask the Scooped. I'm here with the big man himself, Dr. Jackson. Foremost, thank you for coming and answering and taking time out of your day to answer these questions. It's a pleasure. It's nice to meet you, Dr. Jackson. Okay. All right, let's get started. Educators come from all sorts of backgrounds, um, and each educator has their own reason for getting into the education or academia for whatever reason. What inspired you to get into education? Well, I chose to be an educator because uh, actually I, I wanted to uh, have the same impact on students that some of my favorite teachers had on me. Uh, I actually started out as a music teacher and so as a musician I had some great models and role models as musicians who uh, showed me the ropes and showed me the way and uh, they were uh, excellent for me and so they encouraged me and, and, and so I wanted to be like them and so that was uh, the initial impetus for me going into uh, education. Well that makes sense and that explains why you became a, eventually became a superintendent I suppose. With that being said, going into the superintendent part, what could you describe your role as superintendent? Like what responsibilities you have to the community and so forth? Well, it's, it's all encompassing. My role as superintendent is to uh, set the stage so that ultimately students like yourself can be successful when they're finished uh, going through our school system. To help gather the appropriate resources for our teachers, uh, to make sure that you have the right support, that you have all of the things you need so that when you're finished and you walk across that stage and you shake my hand, we can do so knowing that you are prepared for the future or the options that you choose. Uh, and so that's my primary role. Uh, and primarily, uh, I, I spend most of my time doing that for and, and, and with you uh, as the representative of the school system. My job is really to be a great big cheerleader for everyone uh, and to make sure that we're doing that in a way that you uh, have everything that you need to be successful. And so that means sometimes supporting teachers. That also means uh, working with your parents and with the community. Well. You just described overseeing everything and being a cheerleader. How would you des describe your vision then as far as the school system's future? Well, in terms of the school system, uh, I think the future here is very bright. I honestly believe that we are doing everything that we possibly can to ensure that our students can access all of the resources possible uh, to be successful. And the current actions you've taken certainly stand as a testament to your motivation towards working to that vision, of course, well, thank you. including uh, recently receiving the high honor of Regional Superintendent of the Year and your previous track record in Henry County Schools, I believe. That's right. You've done your homework, my lady. <laughs> Proud of you. Thank you. And through, obviously, your actions, you've made some real changes. Uh, what of your actions so far do you feel are your most successful? I, I really believe that for, uh, for me, I think the, the, most, uh, the thing that I'm most proud of uh, is the work around uh, bridging the gap between the way we currently teach students and uh, the way of the future, preparing students for the future. So in all of my roles, I've really been a proponent of, of introducing new and cutting edge technology so that students have access to those and removing all of those barriers that would keep uh, students from having access to those cutting edge tools. So I'm probably most proud of the work I've done in the area of technology. That's obviously a huge part of your, your, your management style looking forward and so forth. And with that said, how, do you, how exactly do you look to maintain that form of momentum and success that you've already got, gotten well, going? I think you, you set the stage, you train the people, uh, you give them the support that they need, and then you get out of their way. And then you allow them to grow and to capture that excitement and then to forge forward uh, to, to uh, uh, realize the possibilities that are out there. I love when we're able to just set the stage and then stand back and watch people just do amazing things, watch our teachers do amazing teach uh, things in their classrooms and watch our students do amazing things with the, with the, with the uh, tools that they gather from uh, that, that uh, excellent instruction. So I, I just enjoy that and making sure that we're moving forward constantly and challenging every single day the status quo. We've got to do something different. Uh, every single day is, is my mantra to our, to our staff. 
And every day you move forward by taking huge leaps, like with the rollout recently with the, the laptops and the MacBooks and the iPads and so forth. So I'm sure this has faced some challenge. Oh, what sure. ex what exact, what uh, is your biggest challenge that you face? I think the, the biggest challenge I face sometimes is mindset. Uh, and having people recognize or accept that the way I went through school is not the same way you're going through school. Having the community understand and recognize clearly that schools have changed, the way students learn, uh, uh, those, uh, those things are changing rapidly, the content is changing, uh, and this generation is very much natives to a technological society. So getting people to understand that some of the older ways of teaching are not bad, but that we have to evolve as well and provide our students with educational opportunities that are suited towards the way they learn best. And obviously you've overcome these obstacles because a lot of your policies have been hugely successful. But success is kind of a general term. How do you personally define or measure success, I suppose? I, 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 really, uh, I really measure success as getting better every single day. Uh, I use constantly the difference between um, perfection and excellence. I pursue excellence and I push people to pursue excellence because you can be perfect and that means that you're perfect one time. Excellence means you're getting better every single time you try it and each time you can get better uh, than the last time. And so for me, success revolves around the pursuit of excellence and that excellence is never an accident if you're going after it every single day and your intent is to be excellent every single day. So that's kind of the way I approach success, that it's a, it's a journey uh, and never a destination. With those standards, obviously you're a very successful man. <laughs> um, what exactly inspired the new slogan? Or the slogans behind, or what have, what's inspired the slogans behind every year? And, and the particular one that's been implemented this year, No Limits Possibilities 2.0. Well, it, it, it really, last year our theme was It's Possible. Uh, and I just believe, again, that whole notion of excellence means you get better. And so there's no reason for us to, we were, if we were pursuing uh, all of the great possibilities in front of us, then in fact, life is iterative, meaning that we, we do things you know, continuously until we, we perfect them and that we move them forward and we get better at them every single day. And I was actually sitting and watching uh, a, a documentary on Microsoft where every year you, you didn't go Microsoft uh, 1.0 and then we forgot about it. So each time that it got better, you, 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 you move to the next iteration. So our possibilities this year are the 2.0 uh, uh, segment of those and that the no limits piece is we're going to remove all of those barriers, be they real or artificial, uh, by being ready and by pursuing uh, with intentional and deliberate focus getting better every single day. So we're not going to let the limits uh, really lock us out of being the best that we can be as a school system, as professionals, and most importantly as students. Well, unfortunately, we're reaching the end of our interview and we only have time for one more question. Okay. And that would be because, as you've mentioned throughout this interview, you're forward kind of guy. You're, you're, you're interested in the future and how, how we can affect it and for the better and for, so forth. How do you see the role of not necessarily you as superintendent, but superintendent in general changing well, in the future? <laughs> that's a really good question. Uh, I think superintendents are going to have to be greater risk takers on behalf of students. I think we're going to have to be creative problem solvers uh, and that we're going to have to do things in ways that we've never done them before. Uh, whereas in the past maybe we've had more uh, financial resources at our disposal. Now we're going to have to make very uh, conscious decisions about resources and really prioritize uh, with more deliberate focus on the outcomes. If we want to make sure that our students have cutting edge technologies, that means that we're going to have to probably make some real hard decisions about some other things that we may not be able to do. And so I think we're going to have to be very much creative problem solvers, we're going to have to be risk takers, but more importantly I think we're going to have to be more student focused than we've ever been because the work has to be about what's best for your future and particularly we're going to have to give up some of the things that got us here to get us where I think we need to be. Well, thank you again Dr. Jackson. Thank you. And this concludes our segment of Ask a Soup with Dr. Jackson.